In today's podcast episode, I have a very special guest who is an event planner who focuses in doing not only weddings, social events, but many other type of events. Her name is Stephanie Ulloa from Events by You. And welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Lucy, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And I'm so excited to have you on today's podcast episode because you have so much to share. Thank you. We were talking <laughs> off camera. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, we have to save it for the episode. <laughs> So let's start off by first, you know, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, Stephanie. Sure. Um, so I grew up as, um, I'm from Miami, I'm from South Florida, Cuban uh, background, and um, I fell in love with weddings at like a really young age. I was always everybody's like little flower girl and little junior <laughs> bridesmaid, and I, my mom always says that I walked my first, my her best friend's uh, wedding when I was 18 months old. I was her flower girl. Oh, wow. So and she young. says, I walked perfect to the end of the aisle and then I got to the front and I go again <laughs> oh my God. so it's been in my DNA <laughs> since I was a toddler so you've always loved the magic of I, weddings from I don't know what it on. is I love a party I think is part of it like I've always been like a party animal um and then I was everybody's junior bridesmaid and I was everybody's flower girl and so and I've always been like a creative. I did musical theater in in school. And that was we were a theater. I am a theater girl. kid. I am a theater <laughs> kid. I go. I do my annual trip to New York to go watch a bunch of shows. That's I am. Awesome, and I, but I also got to do the production part of theater, which really was like a really great training ground for like event planning and space Absolutely. planning and visuals. And so that's always that's kind of I've always like had a little bit of a crutch on my. Like production design day. and production, yeah, like the whole visuals. 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are in Miami. I am. So Born and raised. How did you decide? Or how did, like, yeah, how, what was the pivotal moment that you felt that I'm going to do event planning? Like, how did you decide to join the chaotic world of <laughs> oh <my> event planning? <laughs> People voluntarily do this business. Um, <laughs> so I have a little bit of a, I like I mentioned, I've always had, like, a creative bug in me and I've always I'm not an office person like I've done those jobs but it's never been like a thing for me and kind of in like the least non-douchey way of saying this is that like you know how everybody has that person in your friend group who kind of like plans all the events or like kind of tells you like hey this looks Who's great like the expert that everyone wants like their seal of approval because like they're the expert of the I team. guess yeah that was kind of always me so okay. I helped I did like a bunch of like bridal showers and birthday parties for my friends. I got married really young and I did my whole wedding by myself. Um, I planned a, a quinceanera for my sister-in-law um, pretty much alone. I consider that my unofficial like first event. That was like your start. That was like my starter. That was like my gateway event. <laughs> um, Let's look at those photos. No, 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 no. That's, no. <laughs> I, we, we were kind of mentioning it like off camera, but like so you look back at some of these, like your first events and it's like, Ugh. <laughs> uh, I didn't do that. Yeah. That wasn't me. Yeah. No, but we all have that beginning, which I think it's beautiful to look right. back on. Yeah. I mean, I'm super grateful for all those moments, and they're super humbling when you see yes. this. It's like, damn. It reminds me of, like, okay, I've grown so much. Yeah. So um, I kind of just naturally fell into it, and I had, you know, rented from certain vendors and used certain decor people for, you know, those events that I, you know, built relationships with or whatever. I was actually teaching. Okay. Um. I didn't, um, I, I had been uh, on a law school trajectory that didn't really work out. So then I was just, you know, teaching, trying to figure out what was I was going to do. And I actually got laid off from a teaching job. I was and told, you were teaching middle school. I was teaching middle school science. And I was told that my contract on my birthday, I was told my contract was not going to be renewed. That is so tragic it's on your awful. birthday. Oh, my God. It was like the worst birthday. Um, but then, so I had like my five minutes where I cried to myself. And I was like, I can't believe that like I was a new mom. We were like a little broke. So it kind of just seemed at the time that like the world was like falling apart around me. And I had started toying with the idea of like maybe starting maybe to make make a side hustle of like events and like I could do this. It's you not, always knew you kind of wanted to get into the event world. Right. And I was good at it. Like I was naturally good at it. And I liked it. That's the other thing is I had kind of always worked these jobs were like aside from teaching. But before that, like I had done a bunch of these office jobs. They were like, OK, fine, I'm getting a paycheck. But I don't really love what I'm doing. Right. So I did love teaching, and I loved this, and I loved this more. So I 
made a couple of phone calls that afternoon and I was like, let me just call some of these people that I've been working with for the last couple of years and see if like anyone's hiring maybe like a receptionist and like, I don't know, a floral company or a rental. You're like, I just need to find a I'm like, I just need month. like a check for a little yeah. while until I figure, figure things out. And the first person I called um, that I had gotten some rentals from before, she was like, you know, I haven't had an assistant in a while. It's just me and my daughter, but we need the help. So yeah. Come and it was an event rental business. It was an event rental business that unfortunately is no longer in business. Um, but I am forever grateful to Eventiste Rentals for giving me my like foot in the door. They eventually let me run the business. Yeah. You know, she kind of got to a point where she took a step back and let me run the business. And then I kind of had to move on. I got an offer that I kind of couldn't walk away from um, after a few years. But she was super open to me learning the business and kind of told me she's like listen if somebody doesn't walk in here with a planner like feel free take over their event see what you can offer them so i basically started offering these event planning services for really 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 cheap because that's kind of how you have to pay your dues when you're first starting out wait um, say that again <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay your dues when you're first starting out novel concept <laughs> yes and most I, people think that it's like it's just making money the next day. No, it's, and what's amazing, I think just to kind of backtrack and focus on that a little bit, you are already working in that event rental business. Right. So therefore, when clients come in, you're already helping them plan. Mm -hmm. And even with, you were working with other planners and designers, right. I presume. Yeah, and I got to learn a lot mm -hmm. from those planners. I worked with some really, really high-end planners um, and designers that were doing these like celebrity events and were doing some of these like, six figure weddings, weddings yeah. um and six figure events and like i one of the, one of our first things that we did is that we did um we did all the rentals for the second i believe bella's ball oh wow so um that was a and that the bella's ball i don't know how they do it anymore because i haven't been involved in the organization in a minute but at the time it was a collab of these huge planners and designers um, and it was just kind of everybody working together and everybody working as a team and everybody was friends and it was like a, it was really really cool that first that first one that we were involved with because like it was such a divide and conquer where like this planner was able to design it was like a 900 person event That's so insane. this planner That's was so able people. so like this planner designed they all had like a specific a specific role. role so that speaking of theater that theme that year was like Broadway yeah so this planner designed 20 tables to be fan of the opera and this other planner designed 20 tables to be Lion King and this other planner designed you That's know so whatever cool. to do. It, it was so cool and like the theater nerd in me was like ugh, geeking out geeking out geeking out I don't geek out about a lot but I geek out about musical theater that was a super cool first-hand experience just to kind of see how that works and to yeah. watch all these women really kind of like thrive in this business and this build this business is, I, I feel like I, I posted this statistic the other day that this business is like 71 percent women yeah. and you know it's it was so inspiring to learn from these women and learn what to do and what not to do and just kind of see how it all happened yeah and seeing kind of how the business operates yeah in the creative sector yeah so then you're and the logistics sector too and logistics because there's so many levels oh God, to yeah. it so then you're in this space with the company mm -hmm. and then like you said you you got an offer that you couldn't resist right but at the same time did you feel like like you said you were tugging on the idea of like i need to start my business yeah so that's kind of where like i've never really had like an official launch to be honest i kind of it's just grown gradually little by little um and i guys i side hustled this for a long time I haven't, it was only, it was much more recently that you would think that I've been able to do this full time. Yeah. Cause like I said, I'm a mom, I have a home, I have a mortgage, I have diapers that I need to buy. Yeah. I, you know, I have PTA and all these other responsibilities that also went like hand in hand with growing this business. And I always say like, this business is my third baby. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, it's, me on the line a good or bad or ugly like i am the one who's on the line no matter what so it's my responsibility to this business to make it the best that it could possibly be yeah especially because like you said it's like your third baby and as a business owner you have to be like on your business mm -hmm. you have, you're the face of your business you are the driving force behind it it's not like 
if yeah. you don't go, if you don't have a task that day, it doesn't get done unless you say 100%. It. And I have that, I've grown, fortunately been able to grow the company where I now have like interns and I have other people that like help me. But I still, first of all, a little bit of a control freak. So it's hard for me to kind of like delegate things. But like, you know, every Monday my interns get attacked. So I'm like, hey, start working on the timelines for XYZ. Let's start, you know, reaching out to these vendors or whatever. And like yesterday on a Sunday, I was working, of course, because I don't know Never if you stopped. know, do you know who Jen Atkin is? She's a hair person. Yeah. She did a lot of stuff for the Kardashians or yes, whatever. Yes, she has the brand Way. Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she has this hashtag that she always posts. Anytime she posts it, she's like, never not working. Yeah. And I'm like, that's kind of me. Like, right now, while you were never talking, I was answering client text right, messages. Okay. Like, it's always, like, I'm never not, not working. working. I'm no. never not working. So yesterday. That's the life of an entrepreneur, yes. I feel like. It's like, I quit my 9 to 5 to have a 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> that is reality. But I would a million times over, a million times over do this than kind of do anything else and work for, and not that working for anybody else is bad, but like I feel like I am in my stride and I am thriving doing what I'm doing. And you're passionate about it. And I think that's the main key thing as you're launching any business, yeah. especially your own business, is you, you have to be passionate about it because you are 24 seven working. It's not just, oh yeah, I'm going to work nine to four every day. No, no. you're on it. You'll start getting emails. I imagine text by six in the morning, five, especially I text on one of my clients at 6 a.m. today. You literally told me how like at 4 a.m. you have a wedding where vendors are gonna start showing up because by 11 a.m. is a ceremony. Yeah. So you're like on it all the time. I was working until 1 a.m. last night. <laughs> I told my husband, that, like, he's like, what time did you go to bed? I'm like, one. He's like, can you stop? You're like, no. no. <laughs> if this stops, your super nice things that you like to buy stops. And our nice vacations that you like to go on stops. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I cannot answer. stop. Yeah. Can't yeah. stop, won't stop. <laughs> Hashtag can't stop, won't can't stop won't when stop. you are in the event world. Yeah. Well, any business owner, any entrepreneur, like, yeah. that's... It, that's you have to you but have events to. are always always like you know how they like i don't know like banks or even like certain jobs it's like they close monday to friday they yeah. close they have closing <laughs> days like even like new year's eve there usually will be a wedding on I christmas booked day. my first new year's eve wedding yesterday actually the deposit came in this morning <laughs> so you already have it for new year's of i this have year. new year's of this year which is the first time ever we're gonna do a new year's event and i had always said i wasn't gonna do it but I, I always said I was only going to do it with very specific circumstances. And, and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. You're there now. So we're here. It's a lovely couple from New York, originally from Miami, but now they live in New York and they're doing a Miami New Year's destination wedding. wedding. And we'll be there. we will be there planning the whole situation. So you then, so tell me about events by you. Yeah. So what year did you establish your business? You would say like officially officially probably 2015 which is the year that i got like all of my teaching job and i started working for somebody else but that was when i really started so you had your side business which is your event planning business right. and then you also had you were working also with right. the other company right but i was smart fully in the event world and i learned like i said i learned so much that was like such and i have I have my younger girls that work for me that like want to do their own thing and they're always asking me like one of them specifically is always asking me like how do I get clients how do I do this and I'm like you have to work in this business you want to be a planner go work for a planner you want to own a rental company go work for a rental company you want to be a florist go work for a florist like that is I mean, I mean I know it's easier said than done I know that getting jobs is hard but a lot of these companies also do like per diem work and a lot of these I hire per diem all the time I always need hands on event days. And that is the best training to like jump in the pool, feet first on event days, just kind of like go. You learn everything. You learn and you learn on your feet. You have to be, you have to be quick. I will say you have to be quick. You have to kind of be okay with like things that are just constantly changing and flowing. I think that's the main key thing in the events, any like, whether you go into the rental business, the design world, the planning, events never go, no matter how much we plan, right, to like perfection. It never goes perfectly to plan because you can't control. You can get pretty close. Pretty close, but you can't control. Like I always say this example, and I, I laugh because it's so true. When, let's say you have all your vendors and you have the timelines. Let's say that the loading dock 
there's a breakdown in the elevator, or let's say that one of the vendors is running late, your Vendor whole time a truck pops a tire. A tr exactly. Super it like throws common everything thing. off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say like hair and makeup can't run late. <laughs> hair and makeup cannot run late. Hair and makeup runs late. Everyone's screwed. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah, because it's like if I can do things, I need my bride ready. Everybody else can be ready later. Bridesmaids, I don't love to have it that way. But in a push comes to stuff situation, if the bride's ready, we can go. We can start pictures. We can start. We can do a first look while everybody's finishing up. Whatever. But like there, there are things like that, and there, there have been instances where I've worked with really reputable companies that have these super long-standing reputations that I wasn't necessarily impressed by because they were four hours late to a delivery. And I understand things happen. Yeah. Um, this was like a little bit of a weird circumstance, but four hours late is four hours late. Yeah. Push comes to shove. When I have the mother of the bride text me, it's like, hey, we need personals. Where are the personals? And I'm kind of like making it up where I'm like, oh, I have them downstairs. Give me 20 minutes. I'll be right up there. And it's because they're not here yet. And the guy told me he was down the street you know oh my god down the street like miami down the street in miami which literally could be freaking anywhere <laughs> could be like all the way like i don't even know it could like, be in hialeah oh yeah toy ayu mom and nico literally and they're like single we know five minutes is like 50 minutes five minutes and then in traffic <laughs> oh my god yeah that's stressful oh my god it's so stressful so how did you choose events by you? Like, what does that mean? What is your, what is the like the focus of the company, like the services? Right. What is this like? So events by you is actually based off my last name by Uyoa, which is my married name. It's the name I took when I married my husband. Um, the origin of this company, truthfully, was not supposed to be planning. It was supposed to be rentals. My sister-in-law, my father-in-law, and I were looking into purchasing a rental company many years ago. It didn't work out, but we incorporated the name. Yeah. And I wanted, I was already, like I said, I was already toying with, like, doing something else. Um, so I kind of told them, like, guys, I think I'm going to take the name and I'm going to see, like, what I can do with this. I see what I work out. My father-in-law does something else. My sister-in-law works in hospitality, but corporate on the marketing side so you know everybody kind of does their own thing but I really took the name and I'm like I've grown this business so the idea that I had I wanted something a little clever something that wasn't super you know I didn't want to do events by Stephanie or anything yeah. like that I wanted to do something a little bit more neutral mm -hmm. um but then the you also implies that like the event's about you yeah you know like at the end of the day the event's about you and your fiance or your if it's your bridal shower, for example, it's about you. If it's your baby shower, it's about you and your baby or whatever. So I, what I love to focus on and the thing that makes me the happiest is when I do things in conjunction with my clients. I love to build a relationship. And I want to say, I mean, this isn't like a real statistic, but I, like, I want to say 80 to 90% of my clientele are referrals from other clients. Yeah. I, last year... I, perfect example, I in November of last year, I did the wedding for a bride whose sister-in-law I had done two years prior, who then recommended me to her cousin, who I'm doing this current coming November. Oh, wow. The and I have chains like that that go through. Where you I, work with the whole family. I've worked with the whole family. I did a wedding last October where I did the sister, the brother's wedding, and then the sister's wedding uh, several years after. A lot of my brides call me to do their baby showers when they're pregnant two or three years later. You're constantly, that's a key thing is you keeping that relationship strong. I don't want a one and done client. Like yeah. I, I mean, it happens. That's the nature of the business. Sure. There's some people that I never hear from again, or I only see them on Instagram. And I kind of feel like that's also like the benefit of social media is that I get to keep in touch with all these people, yes. even if it's on the periphery of, but like I have some of my first clients that I married in 2016, 2017 that I still follow them on Instagram and I see their kids, you know, whatever, so cool. whatever that I know of. I don't think I have any divorces. <laughs> you have a good luck streak. I, I, I think we're in a pretty good luck streak that I know of. I haven't really, and again, some, a lot of people I only keep up with on social media. So as far <laughs> as social media goes, everything is pretty good, but. That's actually an interesting question to ask a planner. It's like, what has been your divorce rate with your couple? <laughs> So I work with, a, funny enough, I work with a photographer. That's like funny. I work with a photographer who I loved um, that one of their biggest 
one of their pages, like a, like on their home page, is this wedding that they photographed that's stunning. That couple's divorced, <laughs> but they use the photos because the like the location, the quality, and yeah, the quality and the location, or something about it. I can't remember what he's told me before, like what it is about that those photos that yeah. he really loved that wedding, but. Yeah, that couple. He told me that couple. That couple has since divorced, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know that I. Let's just say that you have a good. Strength. Let's just say that the ones that I actually keep up with and the ones that I have developed relationships with, everyone's still together, and yes. we've moved on with other good streak. Yeah. So maybe I'm your good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So you did that. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little bit about like what type of events you plan and what your process is. So. My it's main so cool. You like wear so many hats as a planner. I do. So my main focus is weddings. That is my bread and butter. That is what I love. Um, I love, like I said, I love to build the relationship. So I love working with you several months out, a year out, eighteen months out. I have, I have a wedding that booked me in August for January of next year. So I've by the time we get there, it'll be eighteen months that we've been working together um, for some of these full planning clients that I start with really, really early on. Um, but I also do things like beautiful baby showers and bridal showers. A lot of a lot of my brides don't know I can also do your bridal shower. Yeah. Um, and when do you, you offer like, and, and this is just a question yeah. that I feel like a lot of people that would watch or listen wonder about. Do you think that when you're doing like like the bridal shower, or some people even do bachelorette decorns mm -hmm. and like you know the plan mm -hmm. the whole process, and the wedding itself. Have you ever thought like, hmm, maybe I could just give them like a package deal? If so on a full planning package, you do get one of your pre or post wedding events included. Oh, perfect. On a, yeah. on a, on a full planning. I do have an a la carte uh, menu that's included in all of my, um, when I send you, like my, when I sent you through Inquire and you have a plan, like my planning brochure has all my a la carte and those a la carte rates are already discounted than like what a regular, like if somebody reaches out to me from Instagram would, would get. Be, um, and a lot of my brands, I do end up like I, the bride that uh, I had a bride that I was speaking with yesterday I sent a contract yesterday. She asked me, she's like, I might need help with the welcome party. Should could you also do that? She's gonna be a month of. Um, but could you also maybe help us with the welcome party? And that's something that they we can need. add on. And that's something that they can add on at a very discounted rate. It's not anywhere near what the full Yeah, because the is. wedding rate is always it's a, a heftier yeah. price tag because right. it's a very detailed work. Correct. Even when it's a month of, there's still a ton of details and a ton of logistics going in. I, I spoke with a potential groom recently it didn't work out and I'm kind of grateful it didn't but um I spoke to a potential groom recently who was like no matter how many times I explained it to him he's like I really don't see what your scope of work is outside of the week of the wedding and I'm like my guy my brother in Christ crickets. I've explained it to you in that moment you and I just look at each other like crickets like no what do you what? mean yeah what do you mean what There's mean? so much to I'm, it. I am working on this on a month of or even a day of you relieve you the headache of I also, I'm working on your stuff like at least six to eight weeks in advance. Like that's why I tell people there's no such thing as a day out coordinator. Yeah. There's no such thing as a there's day There's no one that could just jump in that moment. Just because just I haven't negotiated your contracts for you and just because I haven't pulled your vendors for you and I haven't sourced everything for you and you've done a lot of that doesn't mean I'm not working on your wedding. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm not like emailing your vendors way before I probably should be. Yeah. Especially if you are working with people that I know. A lot. Don't you even help couples like fig uh, figure out their budget? Oh yeah. Like uh, what vendors they should use, like, especially of, according to their style. A day of a month of or a thirty day management client is gonna get a twenty five page welcome packet for me, that is gonna have like a whole bunch of like a step by step like process of what you should be doing, and at what point you should be doing it. Like a ten page vendor list. I have a personalized budget that's linked onto that PDF as well as like an inventory list of all the things that you can include in your wedding day. And if you, there's other things on there that's not on that list, feel free to include it. Um, so I, I, for, for, for those clients that are like, don't need a bigger scale or scope of work, I try to make it as easy as possible for them. But when they, in a discovery call, when I'm asking you like if you've booked vendors and who these vendors are, like many, many times, Again, somebody else I spoke to yesterday, she's working with one of my DJ friends that I've been dying to tell him, like, hey, I'm on this wedding too. Or she just, you know, we are not officially yeah. booked, so I haven't won. I don't like to jump the gun. I'm a little superstitious. Yeah. So even if I feel great about it, and even when the contract. Wait until the, like, everything is. Well, I wait until that money's in my account. <laughs> You're like, I'm not waiting for it. Like, the line, and when they sign it, great. But it's when they put the deposit, which is true. And that is something in. that a lot of people don't understand. I'm like, you can sign a contract all day night. We can talk a million times. We 
can go back and forth on text for three weeks. There's some people that like talk to me and then like weeks later or months later come around to booking me. And that's fine. Because they've probably as, been shopping around. That's fine as long as the date is still available. But I only hold a date after a discovery call. I only hold a date for seven days. Explain the discovery call for sure. those that are not familiar with it. Sure, absolutely. So many times I'll get either a text, a DM, or an inquiry from my website, um, MiamiEventsByU.com. Events with you, letter U. It'll um, be right there. <laughs> as well. um, many times that's those are the three like lead sources of like how to contact me. Um, and again, it will be usually from word of mouth, from somebody like a recommendation. It's you know sometimes it's just straight from Instagram, which is great. Um, Instagram is great for that. Yeah, as well. that is my portfolio is Instagram. Yeah, it's Instagram. It is what it is. So they'll reach out to me. The first thing I do is I try to get back. I'm I am an, I I get itchy when I see notifications on my phone. Like there's a bunch there on my phone that I just looked at right before we started recording. Um, when I see the little red, it drives me nuts. So I try to get back to somebody right away. I have a policy that an email gets res- responded to within 24 hours, and a text message gets responded to within two. Yeah. It's usually way before that because, again, it drives me nuts not having things answered. I hate seeing notifications. Um, Plus, so, you know how important it is to get that initial contact with your client in a certain Strike time by the frame. iron's hot. Yeah. I mean, that's why I've been on vacation and, like, stopped what I'm doing. I'm like, I got to answer text. Sorry. Yeah, it's a hot week. I got to pay for this vacation, guys. <laughs> like, I remember I was in the Sephora in New York City on the phone with – somebody with a potential client because they happened to call me in that moment. So I walked away. I was with my sister-in-law who I was supposed to start the business with. And I was like, I need five minutes. I'm going to go take this call. And we were in Sephora in Times Square in like the busiest possible place we could be. Oh my God. All the hustle and bustle yes. in New York City. Answering this phone call. And I'm like, I, I got to do it. Like I got, this is, you know, these things are make or break. Yeah, it's so true. Unfortunately, like fortunately or unfortunately, like it, it is what it is. You just kind of you got to do it. I never give pricing online to an email inquiry. I never give pricing on a text. I never. I want to. I need not even in that first phone call, not right? Even that, that first phone call, depending, I do. If it's coming from a preferred venue, a venue where I'm on a preferred vendor list, I do have special. Oh, prices. if it's like the if the client went to that venue and they recommended Correct. you, but then like, let's say it's just someone who googled. So someone who googled or someone who came from Instagram. You. You don't get your price until the packet comes in. And I customize that packet to every single person. You have to. But that's amazing because most people just send like I take a one shell template to no, everyone. No, and, and truthfully, I think that that's kind of one of the things that makes me stand. I do a couple of things that I think make me stand out from like other people in the same kind of, you know, level or bracket of where I'm at. Um, that's one of them. I tailor everything to this couple to I even like when you get your welcome packet I'm going on your Instagram and I'm getting pictures of you and your fiance and I'm incorporating them into your welcome packet I love that you say that because if you, we have the power of social media now why mm-hmm. not use it to your advantage and that is a key thing you do right there because also you're able to see who they are get a little bit of feel of yeah. who the couple might be that you're working with and able to personalize that packet to them yeah but also they feel like wow this person took the time to get to know us absolutely I also the other thing I do in your welcome packet is I have a whole collage page Generally speaking, because I've worked at so many venues already at this point, I'm pulling pictures from my archives and putting them in your packet so you can see the work that I've done in your venue. Yeah. If I've done, and most of them, I mean, it's rare that I get somewhere where I've never worked before. Yeah. Um, So I heard something from another client, I'm I'm sorry, another planner years ago that has always stuck with me. And and I've never met this planner. I would love to, but um, she said something, I think it was like on an Instagram live or something like that. And she talked about qualifying your client. Mm Mm-hmm. You have to work for the client, obviously. The client also has to work for you. The client also, you have to mesh with the client. That's why I always jump on a discovery call, even if it's 15, 20 minutes. I need to know, I need to feel your energy. I'm a big energy person. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you on the phone. I want to see what you're like. Do you want to have a good time? Do you want to have a beautiful wedding? Do you? What do you want? But I need, and it's fine. I'm not like saying that only certain people can work with me. I'm just saying like, I need to make sure that we're going to gel because this is a long process. And like I said, some of these people were working 18 months out, two years out. Yeah. Some people do like jump on the process pretty early. I have people asking me for 2026. Wow. That's so crazy. It's nuts. But you want to know something the I had gone to the event, which is the event that yeah, we, we met. met. Yeah, <laughs> and someone was saying, "Oh, I'm getting married in 2025, but I'm gonna wait till next year." I'm like, "Your planning starts now." Like your planning is the second you, just, you get engaged, baby. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? The, the moment second you get engaged, <laughs> your planning begins. 
because there's certain things and there's timelines, right? It does help if a client comes with an idea of what they want because correct. And especially if you're in like, I call it mid-level luxury. I know that sounds like an, like an oxymoron, but it's kind of where I feel like I'm at and like people who are working professionals, I have most of my clients are doctors, attorneys, accountants, designers, architects, which by the way are awesome clients to work with because they understand space and they understand the way they can visualize. Those are my favorites. Um, people that work really hard for the money have very, that are very successful and want to have beautiful weddings, but don't want to have these blowout million dollar weddings, Yeah, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You do not have to have a wedding in South Florida for $200,000, guys. It's possible to do it for less, I promise. <laughs> I promise you it is. Don't let people tell you otherwise. So they're coming to me with these ideas, and but these venues that are in this price range go so quickly. They do book out pretty They book early. out really quickly. So I sometimes have people that want to get married in like less than eight months. But we will say this. Isn't it getting married, especially in Florida? Mm -hmm. Florida is expensive. It, it is expensive. Yeah, very expensive. It's always a different price if they go out of the country. It's cheaper. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Night and day, right? But I, So I had somebody that I spoke to recently about this um, that they had just come from their friend's wedding in Camarilla in Cartagena. Oh, a lot of people are going to be in a Cartagena. A lot of people, get, people get married in Cartagena. I know at least like five couples that... I'm so like, you can it? take like $30,000 and have the most baller wedding in Cartagena. But I always tell people, I'm like, it is so unfair to compare that to here. First of all, I don't know if a lot of people know this. Flowers are grown primarily in South America. Yeah. Ecuador, Colombia, um, Venezuela. Those so climate, the, cost of, the cost of flowers is like a fraction of what it is. Also, cost of labor is really, really low in a lot of in, in South America and Central America in general. I have a photographer that I work with that he's doing his wedding, I think in El Salvador or Ecuador. I can't mm -hmm. remember which one. Um, and he said, he's like, he's, and he sees all of these like crazy weddings. He, yeah, he sees all the weddings. And he's like, I'm spending $10,000 and I'm having a wedding that's comparable to the things that I shoot. No. <laughs> Labor is a big part of it, yeah. in my opinion. Um, for sure. But you can't compare it because you, you're going to drive yourself crazy if you're thinking that you're going to have this like crazy multi-day wedding for like a fraction of what you can do it for here. And I also think that there's a huge problem and maybe this is like a social media slash Pinterest problem is like the realism is like not there. Yeah. People come to me and show me these like really elaborate things and with all these with, cascading florals and, and when I tell them like baby that's like a hundred thousand dollars in flowers yeah what do you mean that's a hundred thousand dollars in flowers I'm like yeah it is because it's, it's not just the cost of flowers balloons like when I do some of these like smaller socials someone sometimes the prices of these balloons and you guys do a balloon sign class <laughs> you know what they cost <laughs> And sometimes you get like a couple hundred bucks and or even into the thousands with these yeah. balloon installs. And people are like, I've heard this a lot, but they're just balloons. Yes. Yes. And they, I agree with you on I that a thousand percent because ever since the Kardashians started so using a lot of balloons, Mindy Weiss. Oh my you know, god. I, oh my god. Hold on. <laughs> Mindy Weiss is a goddess among us and she should be protected at all costs. I <laughs> If I could, if I could get to like a fraction of where Mindy Weiss is, like speak it into the universe, uh, it's gonna happen. Mindy, if you ever need help in South Florida, <laughs> you find me, girl. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so ever since she started incorporating all the balloon design, like with the birthday parties and stuff, I we've I, I've seen it. We even like our students come in. They're like, we want to do this design. How much is the it bear? Cost? Do you know how many times I've done that bear bridal shower? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful, but it's like. The cost, yeah. And yeah. then when they think about like what it is and it's like thousands of dollars, so yeah. it makes a world of difference. And people are like, oh, it's just balloons. But I'm like, there's a difference. Also, quality is a big, Yeah, big it's not thing. your Amazon balloon. It's not an Amazon balloon. It's not a no. balloon you're buying at Party City. You're talking about like Tough Text or yes. like these companies. Um, oh my God, I can't remember the name of the other one. But um, you're talking about these balloons that I have literally reused balloons for the same family a week apart. I last year, last year they before. Because the quality is so different. I've, I, I have one client who's a dear friend of mine who I do all her kids stuff for her. I don't do a lot of kids stuff anymore, but for some people I still do. 
I last year did her daughter's communion party and her sister's, two years ago, her sister's in a bridal shower brunch thing, like the yeah. one where they propose to the bridesmaids, not like the actual bridal shower. Oh, the bridesmaids proposal. Right. I did those events a week apart from each other, swapped out the backdrops, kept the same balloons because the balloons were perfectly intact. And it's the quality. And it's the quality of the balloon. It's also the quality of the balloon designer. This was uh, Carrie from Just a Party, if uh, anybody's ever looking for a little fabulous balloon designer and backdrop designer, she's wonderful. Um, but those things matter. And that's yeah. a lot what you're paying for. Balloons are so labor intensive. I tried a couple of years ago to do a balloon garland. It took me eight hours to get it to look semi-decent and I hated my life every step of the way. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. I get why people charge $500 for balloons. Yeah. I get why people charge $700 for balloons. It's definitely an artistry, especially because it's like, it, it, again, on Amazon you can get those kits, but it's not the same it's quality. Not the same. It's not the same. And I've seen people that have told me that have been like, oh my God, that is outrageous. I cannot believe that you are charging. I can't believe that you are charging. <laughs> charging so much for X, Y, Z. And I'm like, look, I get it. I understand. I'm never going to make anybody spend more money than they want to. I can't force you to do that, even if I wanted to. No. But your expectations have to be reasonable. Yeah. Which a lot of the expectations, like you said, it's such a true thing, I think, for especially you when you deal with the clients firsthand as a planner. Mm -hmm. They come with their Pinterest ideas and all the things that they want. And they want like an aesthetic that the price tag is not within their budget Correct. because they're thinking that they can get that for like maybe 30 K and you, and you in, in all like honesty, what do you see the going rate is, especially right now in Florida with at least starting wedding wise. Somebody asked me recently if they could still do a wedding for $25,000. And I said, you can, but it's not the wedding you're going to want to have. And what I mean by that is, yeah, you can do a wedding for $25,000 if you keep it super small. If you guest keep, count right. Guest count right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to have a wedding. 150 people. 150 people for, for $20,000. No. Not even if you do like a backyard. And backyard weddings are always so much more expensive than people think they are. They are because you have to basically bring so many different vendors into the mix. You have to bring bathrooms. You have to bring <laughs> something that a lot they're of expensive. They are expensive. The trailer, the porta potty trailer is like two thousand dollars, guys. Yeah. Like that's that's you know that's a photo booth and like um, a floor wrap. Yeah. Like a floor wrap is like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. So like you could take the bathroom and do a floor wrap. You know things that like make your event beautiful. I would say as a realistic starting point for a semi, for a pretty decent wedding, mm -hmm. like, seven, like 70. 70. 70 is kind of like the average. I know that not and all of these other places and like Google, whatever's gonna tell you 35. That's also counting people that like go to the courthouse, guys. That's also, that's, those, those numbers are way, way off. Way, way off. Yeah. So that's And also not, I think it depends on the state because yeah, in Florida, 100%. like, but if you Google Florida average wedding, it still says like thirty-five or forty thousand. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I looked at this recently. I think that no, like, no. especially the way prices have changed. Unless, like you said, you you change your aesthetic. The cost of food alone. Because that's another thing that they have to get into mind. It's like depending on the aesthetic you get as yeah. a you know a, like the couple you're working with, mm -hmm. they need to understand that if they want glitz and glam, it's not going to be able to necessarily be within the certain price bracket right. because the venue itself is going to fit your right. aesthetic right exactly even if you're doing a backyard thing i did a backyard wedding recently that was beautiful yeah i can show you the pictures the pictures are stunning and it was it was intimate but it was still like a how many people like a hundred like, yeah like about a hundred and how much was the cost for that one I think all in. Did they get a tent? No, How many vendors they open? didn't. They didn't get a tent. Think about, we had it on, on, on backup, but it was November, so we were pretty sure it wasn't going to. We weren't going to need it. It was a little warmer than I would have liked it to be for November, but we did really decent production. We did the bathrooms. We did <laughs> um, really great catering. We did really great bar. I want to say they were at again not. I'm not going to count what the family spent on preparing the house to be event ready because that didn't really factor into our Your costs, costs. Mm -hmm. but they were still like 45. Yeah. Still up there. Still up there. It's still up there. 
you know, and we had a lot of really beautiful rentals and we did a lot of, they did a lot of stuff themselves. Like they did their seating chart and like those big, like arched backdrops and stuff. They like, did a lot of they, DIY projects. They did a lot of DIY, which I always have like, I clench myself when I hear DIY, but these anxiety. DIYs were really, really good. You got a little bit of anxiety, like I did. What kind of stuff? I did. However, the seating chart was like lapped up to the groom, and it wasn't like executed. We didn't end up putting it out. We'll say that because it wasn't <laughs> really, whatever. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, it was beautiful, and like. I sometimes have a moment, especially in these like really challenging weddings where it's like there's so many moving parts and it's so like difficult because a home is so much harder to do an event in than a place that's like prepared, like that's made that or is made to for an event. Right. They're so much harder and there's things that people don't even think about. Like people don't think about electricity. People don't think about power when they're when they want to do like a backyard wedding. When they want like their father of the bride moment in their like childhood home they grew up in. Like I get it, it's beautiful. But you need to power all of these things. You can't have a DJ and cold sparks and um, catering that needs electricity for ovens and stuff like that all on like your plug on the side of your house. That's so true. So, and lighting. These people, this one specific people, they had a whole, they had professional bistro lights installed that they kept as like an installation. So it worked, it was like an investment for their house, which is great yeah. and it worked great. But that cost money. Yeah. They had their like roof redone. Oh you wow. You know, they had like a bunch so of- So they, they pre-invested and all like probably to prep the stuff house. that they needed to do to the house anyway, yeah, but, but to make it look up to par to for make the it look wedding. up to par for the wedding, which truthfully could have gone to a venue. And again, zero issues with the wedding itself and how it came out. It was beautiful. It really was. It's probably one of my favorite weddings to date. But I just feel like the money could have been used towards venue. Yeah, because you know all the different expenses. Been, there yeah, exactly. But it is what it is, and if that's what people choose, great. I just need people to be like more aware of those expenses i think people just have this misconception if they come in thinking of like i'm gonna do it in my dad's big house in homestead or whatever again nothing wrong with that but just be prepared for the things that you're gonna have to do to make the house wedding ready yeah it's so true yeah so as a planner what would you say are some of the most common challenges that are faced I would say the biggest is probably just like reigning in realism from Pinterest and social media. They're wonderful tools, they're great inspiration, but you have to be okay with the fact that it's like if you only have a $10,000 floral budget, which is a, a pretty good, mm -hmm. it's an okay floral budget, you can do a lot for that. Yeah. But you have to know that it's not gonna look like Pinterest. The other thing about Pinterest is a lot of those are styled shoots. They're not real weddings. Yeah. So a lot of things aren't practical. Yeah. I don't know if you follow, if you know Rothwell or event design. She's a designer out of New Jersey. And she works in like New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. I love her. She does TikToks that are just super honest and super truthful. She also responds to me a lot. So I feel like low-key famous when she responds to me. Um, but she posted a TikTok recently of like a table, like a wedding table. And this is so a styled shoot. They were in water. Like the table and the chairs were like in water, shallow water. Oh, I, mean, I know exactly what you're talking water. about. Water. Yes. And I'm like, are we really going to ask guests to take shoes off? Are we going to ask them to get suits and dresses wet? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. There was another one that she posted. Because you think about also the guest experience. Which yes. Is, that's why I think it's so important to sit down with a planner, especially if you're the bride that, like, you, you just don't even know where to start. You help them kind of get on the path because Absolutely. you think about the couple and what they want. Right. You think about the guest experience yes. and all of that. Listen, at the end of the day, guys, this is a party. The goal is to have fun. The goal yeah. is to enjoy ourselves. Like we don't, like we take on the stress for you so that you can have fun. I have a, a super sweet bride recently that left me like the nicest review where one of the things that she said, which is like, we had told Stephanie from the beginning that what we want to do was to have fun and enjoy our night. And I can tell you from those pictures that I have of her, like she had fun was so they her her husband's not even like a dancer he hates to dance oh my god yes. and that guy was like open shirt with his tie on his head like dancing with having these like tilted the ora loca dancers having the time of his life and like that's what i want i was talking to another bride this weekend that, that she was like oh we're extending and we want to do this and we want to do this i'm like hey party animals and she's like yep we want to have a great time yeah and i'm like I got you. We will have a great time. We will find a super fun Ora Loca. I just hired an Ora Loca that has a bad bunny impersonator. Oh. So, 
Like, here we are in South Florida. Like, you know, Vegas has their Elvis impersonators. We you have the Bad Bunny, Bunny impersonators. You know that there's a you know there's a Pitbull impersonator? His and a Carol G one, I heard. Yeah, the Pitbull impersonator is Mr. Seventy Six. Look him up on Instagram. That's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> like Mr. 305 yeah. or Mr. 76. Yeah, Mr. 76. That is um, hilarious. Yeah, and he's really good. Like, he, I've seen his videos. He's really, really good. So those are, those are you know, you want to have fun. Like, this is Miami. This is like the and party is capital, you guys. Like, this is what we do, and we can do this. But I need you. I need you to do research. I need you to be a little bit realistic. Like, don't come to me. I mean, I... And, and if you're not, it's fine. I'm going to educate you and I'm going to do it in like the nicest way possible. I promise you. Like, I'm not going to make you feel bad. I'm not going to be condescending. <laughs> I'm not. I, you're not going to like, you're going to work within their budget, which 100%. I think is the main thing. Listen, I've had brides come to me and tell me, actually the one that left me the deposit this morning, she told me, she told me that a planner gave her like an outrageous, and it's a New Year's Eve wedding, so I get it. There's a little bit of a premium. I charged to yeah. a holiday premium. I, I did. Um, and I understand, but the r- number that she hit me with, that sh- this planner told her, I was like, that's a lot. Speci- when, especially when it comes to her venue, which is like a pretty easy venue that I, I've worked at before. Um, it's, it's possible. I promise you it's possible, but we have to be realistic. We yeah. have to be realistic. Do you usually have like ranges per section of like different categories for design as a planner? So yeah. let's say for florals, you'll say, okay, a good range of this is this to this. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is also like venue, um, per, like it uh, depends on your venue too, because if you're going to go somewhere like Villa Woodbine in Coconut Grove, Villa Woodbine is beautiful on its own. You yeah. don't, I've seen crazy production and crazy florals and decor in there. You also don't really need it. Yeah, because that venue. Like, that venue stands out on its own. Yeah. You know, there's there's certain venues that are like that. Spanish Monastery is another one. That, like, that venue is stunning. It doesn't need a whole lot. You can, and if you want to, like, by all means, I'm game. I was telling a couple the other day, um, I'm game for whatever you want. Like, if you're, if we're, if we're swiping the card, like, I'm game. Yeah. But they're realistic, and they know that, like, an X amount of floor budget is fine. Mm-hmm. And they're cool with that. And that's not cool with everybody. It's totally fine. Again, we need to be realistic. I will help you. I will help you, and I will walk you through, and I will educate you on what's realistic and what's not. Like, at, unfortunately, at this time, post-pandemic, post-inflation, and post-everything being what it is, like, a $3,000 floor budget is just not feasible. It's not feasible anymore. There was a time when it was. There was a time when we were doing it, and the florals were beautiful, but those same floral designers, we just can't. Like, the costs are more than that. Like, our labor is costs, more than yeah. that. Yeah, you know, so so, just, and that's why I think we see a lot of people doing candles, but they also feel candles to are just as expensive. Candles, are, just as candles expensive. are not cheaper than florals, guys. Candles are not cheaper than florals. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. And actually, now they're using the wax sand. Yes, and I have a wonderful vendor who I love, love, love dearly. But but she but like it's it's not it's she's it's gonna it's gonna enhance. It's not cheaper. And it shouldn't be. Like, it shouldn't be. That's the other thing is, like, they're labor Then When I tell you that this vendor that I'm talking about, like, I think I know on you're talking about. site, Windexes every single cylinder and cleans it to perfection and does the most impeccable work with the most beautiful attention to detail, you're paying for that. Yeah. That is somebody's hard it's work. It's the caliber. It's the caliber work. It's quality, guys. Quality, even when it's not a super ultra luxe, like, Instagram multi-thousand dollar vendor qual there is good quality at every level yes. i promise you there's good quality at the budget friendly at the mid level and at the high and what are some other challenges you face as a planner when working with your clients um i mean or even as a business owner what are what do you feel have been like your top three challenges my top three challenges so Fortunately for me, I've seen this as in, in the industry. I don't necessarily suffer from this problem, but I, I see it in the industry. It's like we, we're touching a bit a little bit. Staffing is a little yeah. bit. Um, even so, with younger people or people that are breaking into this industry, what you mentioned earlier, you have to pay your dues. Mm-hmm. You have to pay your dues. Like, I will tell you that I feel like, and I've seen it in myself, and I beat myself up about this. There have been times where I feel like, this planner came out of nowhere and it's been like two or three years and she's doing all these crazy weddings and she's doing all these like six figure weddings and she's doing all these even like close to maybe a million dollar weddings 
And I'm like, and there's been times where I'm like, man, like, why isn't that me? Like, why haven't I gotten there? Like, where, what am I doing wrong that I'm not? That is that so level? real. Like, that's real. Like, for you to even say, like, most people are like, no, 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 no. it's reality, especially now with social media that oh you see everything. Yes. You see everything. I'm like, man, I would love to do that. And even, I even recently came across a client that told me that they didn't hire me because I was out of their budget. But then the planner they hired, I know charges more than I do. Damn. So it's like, I'm, so it, it's, I see those instances and I'm like, damn it, what am I doing wrong? Like, why is this person who started at the same time as me, like doing all of these things? And then it's like, check yourself because you know your quality of work. And I think that sometimes like I am my biggest challenge. Critic. Like I'm my biggest critic. I'm a, my own worst enemy sometimes. And I'm like, why can't it be me? And why can't it be me? Why am, why am I not doing weddings at the Breakers yet? Yeah. Why am I not doing weddings at the Boca Raton yet? Why am I not doing, you know, at the Diplomat or like some of these places that are like, you know, crazy. And, it's and like, then you have to like check yourself. I remember. Check yourself. Like look where you were 10 years ago. Look where you were five years ago. Look where you were pre Look at all your growth. Look at all my growth. I got to tell you, I know that people are like, the last two years I've been hearing a lot about over the industry in general, and not only in South Florida, like nationwide, that it's been slower because we came off of that pandem pandemic, like boom, of like everything being backed up. So everything Like that pandemic doubled. high where everyone right. was just eager to get back into like mixing and tell socializing. I've had my best two years, the last two years. Yeah. I am starting off, I told you, I, I inquiries for 2026. I have a couple months for 2025 that are already sold out. So I, in those moments, it's like when I check myself, I'm like, oh, we can curse here. But I'm like, bitch, get it together. You can curse here. Okay. <laughs> like, get it together. This is real. <laughs> Put your big girl panties on because you've come so far. Yeah. And you, I used to, I say this all the time, like, I used to pray. And I'm not a super religious person, but I used to pray to be where I'm at now. I used to pray to be like, I want to be going to like tastings in the middle of the day. And I want to be going to like all these things. And I don't want to have to work like an online customer service job where like clients don't know that I actually have a, a job. And I, and like my peers don't know that th I also have like, that this is really still a side hustle. And when I tell you that I haven't been doing it full time for that long, people are shocked when they find out how long I've been actually doing this full time versus how long I had to side hustle this. Yeah. But you have to check yourself and you have to be grateful for how far you come. I still have goals. There are still a million things I want to do. I want to work at the Breakers. I want to do a 500 person wedding at the Breakers. I'll probably die after, you know. <laughs> I feel like someone pinched me. Someone, like <laughs> I'll probably, I, I, um, I have a venue from um, that follows me on Instagram from New York. It's a pretty prominent venue. They don't only follow me, they co regularly comment yeah. on my work. And That's they amazing, comment on how beautiful it is. And, whatever. and I'm like, how did that happen? Why are they doing this? To the point where, like I mentioned, my annual New York trip, like I'm gonna make it a point to see that, to go tour the That's venue. That's so good, yeah. Because I'm like, if I even do one wedding in New York, it's like, I know it'll lead to more, but it's like, I, I in my wildest dreams, I can't even like, figure out how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Like I'll figure it out. I love it because you're such a hustler and I am a hustler. also you're just like real <laughs> because that's honestly what hustling is all about. It's like, it's not just like easy squeezy, mm -hmm. like, like overnight, it takes hard work, dedication and it's year after year. And like you said, it's like looking back and saying, Hey, I'm proud of myself. I mean, like, yeah. look, this is two years on the line two, and you have goals and yeah. it will happen. It's like, I always say it's like that, um, loud, like doubt noise that yes. comes in our mind that it's like we were worst critic. Yeah. But you have to kind of overcome that. And it's good that you check yourself and you're just like, no, like I prayed for like this yeah. before and I'm here now. So imagine we're going to reach the amount of times that I've sat like crying to like my husband or like my friends being like, why can't I be there? Like, like I'm not a big crier, but like there's moments where you just, you get, it gets to you. And it's like the, the moments that I've been like, why can't I do what this person is doing? Or why can't I do what this person is doing? And then like, it's usually my best friend. My best friend and I, like you would never think that we're like friends. Cause like, we were, <laughs> what? <laughs> so she's my son's godmother. And my we like, we bicker a lot, but it's in the most loving way possible. But sometimes my son's like, why are my you guys? That. Right. It's and it's my son sometimes is like, why are you guys fighting? He's like, I promise we're not fighting. Like, I, I promise you, like, I would take a it's bullet for her. I would take a bullet for her. But so she sometimes, she'll, like, dead ass look at me and she'll be like, bitch, look how far you come. Like, yesterday I texted her and I'm like, I need these people to make deposits. Like, I was just venting. And she's like, remember that last year you were worried that you weren't going to be able to do this full time. 
Yeah. You were worried about where it was coming from, about where the inquiries were coming from. And look now. And you just sent out four contracts. Yeah. In the same day. On a Sunday, no less. Yeah. You know. So. Growth. Growth. It's, it's a, it's a marathon, not a and race. There's so many things I want to do. Like, I want to do a wedding in Europe. Like, I would love to do a wedding in, like, a castle in Spain. Like, I love Spain. Yeah. My fam Like, my family's origins are from Spain. So I would love to do, like, a medieval castle. But you have, like, travel plans for sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I'll go. Listen, I'll go to the opening of an envelope. So if you if you write the check, I will be there. <laughs> I love it. <that> I am. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so opening up an envelope in Europe, just <laughs> <laughs> anything, like literally anything. Like I, I, I have so many goals of like the things I want to do. Like I want to, I want to uh, either grow or acquire different areas. I have this idea of like, so does that mean that you do destination planning as well? I have not yet done destination planning, but I am open to destination planning. Here's my other problem is that I'm a little too honest sometimes. And I, probably shoot myself in the foot by telling people that's like listen you're probably better off getting a destination planner doing in the market that you're actually having the wedding but that's so real and honest but it's and i've had people that are like hey i want to have a wedding in mexico and i want to take you and i'm like listen i will go wherever you want me to go i can be ready to leave with my passport in my hand in an hour yeah but it's gonna cost you three times more to bring me than to hire someone local. I do a lot of destination well, weddings. that's how much it shows you care and you really love what you do. Because one, that's very honest, but two, it is. And that way the client can decide like, okay, but no, like I'll pay for even those three times. But then right. they can make the dis educated decision because you're educating them on the fact that it's going to cost them I'm a lot I'm all more. into like teaching people about what is real and what is not. And I... Um, I've had, yeah, like talking about that Mexico place, like here's the thing with, with like going to Mexico or going to like Dominican Republic or wherever, like I need to go to that venue or to wherever at least two or three times. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that when I'm there, I'm not coming alone. I have to have my team with me. I have to. So you're talking about flights. You're talking about meals. You're talking about hotel rooms. I also need to be in the same hotel room of wherever the event is going to be. Because sometimes people are like, oh, I can put, you know, we can put you in a different place. And that doesn't work. Yeah. I Because then, because then you're going to pay for my transportation to get to where I'm going to yeah. go. So while my rate is going to stay the same, that's why I don't necessarily have a travel rate because the planning rate is what it is. Mm -hmm. But there's all these other expenses that you're going to incur. And again, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. But it, there are things, if you want me and my service and my level and my quality of work, there are things that have to go with it. Yeah. Which when I charge you the planning fee, I'm basically, you're, you're paying my services obviously, but that also includes all of my overhead. Mm -hmm. My overhead grossly increases if we're traveling. Yeah. It is what it is, unfortunately. And I, I mean, again, I would love to. Absolutely. I will go wherever you want me to go. <laughs> but just know that we got to pay for a couple of people to come staff. along with my team staff scouting. Um, I don't know vendors in those areas, you know, but that being said, I am a destination wedding planner for people that don't live here. So people that are from New York or people that are from, yeah, especially with Mass a lot of New Yorkers getting married. I, I have a one, one South. particular uh, venue in Homestead that draws for whatever reason, a lot of out of towners. Which one is that? Walton house. Okay. Well, Historic yes, Walton yeah. house in, in Homestead, which I love. Um, it's, it's so cool because it's like, it is one of those like rustic barn venues, but it has like a tropical element and mm -hmm. it's also an animal sanctuary. So people really love that. Yeah. yeah. So they, they, you know, they have all these rescued animals on the property and they bring them out during cocktail hour. So we have like exotic parrots and like a kinkachu and monkey. Also makes it like an experience. Yeah. During yeah. cocktail hour, it's an experience. So they'll bring them out. They have like animal trainers on staff. So they bring them out and like, you can take pictures with like a, a you can have a capuchin monkey be your <laughs> ring boy. That's so crazy. Yeah. So it's it's really cute. So that venue specifically draws a lot of out-of-towners. I've done weddings for people from Atlanta. I've done weddings for people from New York. And so those are destination weddings for those clients. Yeah. But I am local. So you're, you, you have your preferred vendors in right. your team, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Preferred vendors are like my homies. Like these are the people that I've spent 10 years building relationships with. You know, I've... And that is like how... I'm, how important would you say to anyone listening or watching is to build that vendor relation? Like it's, what would you, what would you rate it from a one to 10? I mean like a nine and a half. 
I mean, with the other half being like maybe social media, <laughs> because like if my referrals aren't coming from former clients, it's coming from other vendors. Yeah. Um, I refer people to other vendors. Like I said, in my, my welcome packet, you've got like a 10, eight to 10 page vendor list. And it's people that I've worked with it, that I've had great experiences with that also refer me. Like it's uh, unfortunate for better or for worse. Like this is a mutual relationship. Right. And as much as I love your work, if I could refer you a couple of times, but if you're also not referring me, there is a little bit like, I'm not going to put you at the top of that list. You right. might say on the list, but you might be towards the bottom. Yeah. You know, I have caterers that I work with that I love that recommend me to everybody. I have venues that I work with that I love that recommend me to almost everybody. It's those relationships are so important. Like I, I, I'm planning a vacation, a, a trip to Mexico with some, with a, a friends of mine that own a catering company, Yeah, you know, that we've just become really good friends. Like, like almost family. In a almost sense. like these are my coworkers. Like yeah. we don't like, I don't have an office. So like, I don't have like water cooler chatter with like people. This yeah. is what we do. What a question. <laughs> so I, with your preferred vendors, though, how did you go about making preferred vendors and getting on preferred vendors list as a planner? Um, recommendations from other people. Um, a lot of times the client books me and it's a venue. Sometimes it's a vendor, a venue I've never worked at before. And you just have to work your butt off to do the best job possible because that is literally free leads. Have you ever have to pay have had to pay for? No, and I won't. Okay. I, I. That's something they do, by the way. Yeah, some that is something they do. I actually, so the venue where I got married, not the current catering sales director, but the one, I think pre-COVID, I had been trying to get into. The venue where I got married is like my one of my favorite venues still to this day, and I have a wedding there coming up there in a couple of weeks. Um, they, I found out like the reason that I never really got on the vendor list, no matter how many weddings I did there or whatever, is because the the catering sales director was taking three hundred dollars to her personally her wedding to remain on the vendor list. So mm -hmm. you are paying to be are paying to be on that vendor list. It's very popular in Miami and I just yes. it actually in Florida where the preferred vendor a lot of times have to pay. Like I know like some venues even like in North Florida it's like $600 a month to stay on the preferred vendor list. Yeah. And that makes it I think a little trickier because it's yeah. It's not basically just because preferred vendor, it's a business it's a negotiation. Right. And it's, it's, it's kind of goes back to the thing of like, not necessarily nepotism. I don't know if this is the right word for it, but it goes back to the same, the same kind of similar concept where it's like, if you have the money to pay for it, those are the ones that are going to continue to get work. And I guess the idea is, it's like, well, you're paying us $600, but if you're booking a client that's going to charge you, that you're going to charge 5,000 or 10,000, then that's going to more than pay for itself. So like, I guess I understand that, but ethically there's some gray area there. And I have vendors, I mean, and I have venues where I'm on the preferred list that do ask for a percentage and that's fine. Like it kind of is what it is. Um, again, if I were to pay an agent, like an ad agency or something that like they would be charging me something. Oh, that's a good way to look at but it. But I also have venues that I've offered, you know, a commission to, and they're like, no, we don't want it. Yeah. We want you on our list because we know that we trust you and you work within our parameters and that we know that when you are here, we don't have to worry. Yeah. And that to me means more than any kind of commission or anything that I can pay for because that's 100% trust. That's 100% you've worked your ass off and you have proven to this venue that's a pretty high-end venue that works in conjunction with a very sought-after ceremony venue. Um, they trust you enough to be on yeah. list. And they trust you to execute falsely. And that's the specific venue that I'm talking about. This week alone, I've sent out several contracts for, for their clients. Oh, that's amazing though. So I, I, I'm forever grateful to that venue because they're part of the reason that I've had one of my best years ever. But you it know? comes to show you that having that connection with a venue, them being a preferred vendor list, because a lot of times couples first go to see like their dream venue. Yeah. And then from there, they're like, okay, do you know a good planner, a good right. designer, a good DJ? They like Absolutely. get everything from there. Yeah. What are your top, like, do nots as a planner? Like, what would you tell someone, like, do not? Like, the, the, the not list. <laughs> the N-O-T, not K-N-O-T. <laughs> the not list. Um, don't DIY. <laughs> don't 
<laughs> don't DIY as much as possible. There are certain things you can do. Like if you want to DIY place cards, if you want to DIY invitations, like that. Like little stationary. Little items, stationaries. Like or even like a lot of people have crickets now. Like you can buy acrylics on Amazon. If you want to make your own bar signs, that's something. We're not going to DIY centerpieces anymore, you guys. Like we, we silk flowers, fine. you know. And silks and fresh florals are literally almost within the same cost. And people yes. think it's. Oh, if I do silk, but I always say this, and you're probably going to laugh when I say it because I say it to the students. I'm like, so silks and fresh florals mm -hmm. are almost like right then and there, Correct. neck and neck with same yes. pricing. Unless you go to the Dollar Tree to get them. <laughs> Let me tell you. Silk florals. We can use <laughs> silks. When... But the quality is not the Correct. same. We can use silks when people can't touch them. Yeah, like ceiling Ceiling installs. Or maybe like a Arches. Arch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that all stuff are maybe even super, super high centerpieces, like a lot of those tree centerpieces. Oh, the trees, yes, those the are, those are all, guys, those are not real trees, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, I work at a venue, I work at a venue that's very popular for ceiling installs. Yeah. Um, most of the times those are, they're pre-made silks, still, it's still and then they add on, well, you're, you have to, they fucking hang things from the ceiling. Yeah. Like, that's still labor, people getting up on ladders. That's and a truss. A most truss, times most times, or like some kind of pulley where you have to like actually like old school style, like pull things up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's labor. A lot. I think a lot of people factor in cost of like purchase or leasing or whatever, but don't factor in labor. Yeah. And there's, there's people are not doing this by themselves. Your floral designer is not doing work by herself or himself. They have a whole team behind them that's mm -hmm. coming there and working with Assistance, them. Assistants, the, the I'm person not cleaning doing this up. by yeah. myself. I don't have a whole team. I have, I'm sorry, I do have a whole team that comes with me, uh, depending on how many guests we have. I have a 200 person wedding coming up, and that's on all hands on deck. Like all five of five or six of us are going to be there that day. We got to wrangle 250 people yeah. from ceremony to cocktail to reception. And make it a smooth transition. And make it a possible. smooth transition mm -hmm. with musicians, with staffing from the hotel, with our DJ, and with florals that need to be moved from ceremony to. Re that's the thing. Is it, that's another thing. Is like we can repurpose things, but repurposing things takes people takes manpower. So when we are repurposing ceremony florals into reception, which we do very frequently, it's a great way to save money. Mm -hmm. um, but we do. It's it's cheaper to have people on site and move things around than it is to just create a whole new install. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have to pay for it. It's still gonna cost, like we're still paying people hourly to be there. Yeah. Um, so, the, the yeah, so DIYs are not a thing we're doing for the most part. And then what would be another one? Um, don't, I, th I mean, I keep going back to like being realistic. Don't think that just because your hair and makeup needs to be, uh, that because the your uh, wait hold on they don't think that because your hair makeup is done that doesn't necessarily mean the bridesmaids don't need to be done oh that's a good that's point. another one that people think it's like oh well I'm the bride I can go earlier and the bridesmaid doesn't need to be done do you really want to take pictures with a hair makeup on do you really want to take pictures with your hair not really done you don't so neither do you anybody else your bridesmaids don't your bride doesn't your bridesmaids have spent a lot of money to be your bridesmaid let's face it the dresses what? are expensive <laughs> your hair makeup is expensive your Four day bachelorette to Croatia is expensive. I've heard some crazy bachelorette parties. Oh. I actually heard something recently. I don't know if, how real this is or not, because this is one of the thing that was like a personal experience, but I read recently like that there was an eight thousand dollar bachelorette party per person. They yeah. were going somewhere to like Europe or something like that. And I'm like, guys, we're getting a little crazy. Yeah, that is a bit much. Because it's a lot already to ask of your bridesmaids to be part of your special day and they're gonna spend on their hair, right. their makeup, their dress, their accessories, also the bachelorette trip. And then on top of that, uh, the bridal shower, they have to buy you a gift. They have yeah. to buy you a wedding gift. Like yeah, exactly. That's why I think the bridesmaid proposals that people are doing now, it's so cute because it's a way to give back and facilitate. Right, and I, I have a lot of bridesmaids that will pay for some of those expenses. So like a lot of my brides will pay for their hair and makeup. Yeah. Like, the two thousand dollars or whatever it's gonna be for the whole bridal party, like they're gonna pay for it. Like yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna factor it into my budget. I'm not gonna make my girls pay for it. Some do, some don't. It is what it is. It depends. It depends guess, on yeah. the bride and the couple and their budget or whatever. Um, but yeah, have realistic realistic expectations of your friends. Have realistic expectations of your vendors. Have realistic realistic expectations of your guests. 
the other don't is I would say is don't bring in so many opinions. <laughs> oh my God, that's a hard one. <laughs> and that's a hard one because a lot of people want their friends' opinions or want their moms or their dads or, and especially when parents are contributing to like the finances of the wedding. Oh my God, they have an opinion for sure. They have an opinion for everything. And a lot of times I've seen it's the wedding your parents want you to have or it's the wedding your mom wants you to have or it's the wedding your sister wants you to have. I've noticed a trend recently that younger people are starting to get married again. <laughs> For a while, it was people like in their 30s. Yeah. I've even had some brides and grooms like in their 40s. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm seeing a lot this year and recently of like the 27, 25s mm -hmm. and unders. But most of those are parents that are contributing heavy to the financials yeah. of these weddings. And they have a lot Which honestly, and this is just to add, because I know you've seen it too, because we're both into TikTok. <laughs> Guilty. A lot of the couples that you're seeing, like there was this very popular TikToker who went viral and even got like a feature on a, like on a news article, I think for brides, that said her wedding was 65K in New Jersey. Okay. And they're young. I find that everything. New Jersey market is like similar in pricing to where we so, are. To, yeah, to Florida, but listen to this. So she said, honestly, how we saved for 65K, she said, our family did help us with a portion of that. That's the bingo. So yeah. to a lot of you couples that are out there thinking like, oh my God, I have to remember a lot of the, the stuff you're seeing on TikTok or Instagram, you don't know if their parents contributed and a lot are contributing. Well, that's the thing is that like, if she's saying she had a wedding for 65K, but people helped, that's not what happened. Your wedding was more than that. You contributed 65K. No, they, they, they came in with, I think the, I think they were able to get 30, though they did together. Oh. So the means that their family or their parents supported the rest. And it's the same with this other one that said, how to say 40K for a wedding, 45K for a wedding. And it said, well, our parents gave us 20K. And I was like, <laughs> it's like that meme that you see every once in a while. It's like how I became a millionaire by 30. It's like, wake up at 5 a.m., work out, eat a good breakfast, be daddy's special little boy. <laughs> Exactly. So like those things, it's like those they, things matter. Yeah. And listen, it's fine. Like, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with anybody with anything like that. But like, again, I keep going back to this, like, please be realistic when it comes to each person has their budget. Yeah. And that's why working with the planner, you help facilitate that because if someone tells you, listen, I have, like you said earlier, we were talking that if they have like a 45K wedding budget, you know what vendors to contact. You, right. you know how to make the action. You know where most of their budget's gonna go. Yeah. Well, listen, no matter what your budget is, half your budget goes to food and beverage, period. End yeah. of story. It is what it is. Simple as that. Simple as that. Half your budget, no matter how much it is or no matter how many people you're having, half of it is already designated to food and beverage. Bottom line, you gotta feed people. You've got to feed people. And the longer your list is of guests, like your guest count, the more money it's going correct, to cost. Correct, correct. That's why, like I, when I said, I had a, a somebody last year that asked me if they could still have a wedding for 25K. And I'm like, sure. Can you have a wedding? Like, yeah, sure. But it's not what you think. Like that doesn't go as far as it used to. Yeah. It is what it is, it's unfortunately. True. Fortunately or unfortunately, good, bad, whatever, it is what it is. I just the economy has changed a lot now, yeah. and I think it's like one of those things where especially Florida has become a very expensive state. Yeah, it has been, especially Miami. Like, I'm I'm based in Miami. I know, you know, we, we do a little bit of work everywhere else, but Miami specifically is, like, gotten a little nuts. Miami Beach is, like, untouchable for a lot of people. Yeah. There's, I think, one venue that I think is still, like, kind of reasonable on Miami Beach, um, the Palms Hotel, oh, I think yeah, is the only one that's, like, kind of still reasonable for some people. But, like, most of them have a, a, a six-figure food and beverage minimum. Yeah. And people are paying it. So the market is there. <laughs> but then I also have clients that sometimes come to me or inquiries that sometimes come to me that have been told by – other planners that you're not going to do X, Y, Z for under $35,000 or $350,000. And that's also not true. That's just a little, it's yeah. just, there's just, it depends on what your style is. Exactly. I think, but that's a little, like you can't say also the minimum is 350 K for yeah. a, a wedding. Yeah. And that's not true either. No, there, but you know, there's a budget for everybody. There is a planner for everybody. And I will say this. 
I am like naturally a competitive person. I'm like the worst person to play like board games or sports or anything with. Oh my I, god! Like, yeah. like, I am like a really like you know Monica from Friends. Like, yes. Th- how she, that's kind of how I am. However, in this business, I found myself not to be so competitive because there is such a range in clientele and there's so many options that there is enough mm-hmm. food for everybody at this table. And as much as sometimes that instinct of me to being able to be like no I have to do it or I have to be yeah. the one to do this or whatever why isn't it me or whatever at the end of the day it's like I want everyone to succeed I really do I want these girls that we've all come up in the same more or less the same time well, not necessarily these girls but all these people that these vendors that we've all come up more or less at the same time and I want everyone to do well I it makes me really sad when someone has to back out of this business because they you know because COVID hit them hard and they still haven't recovered or because it's not going the way that they thought they, like it makes me sad it makes me sad to see people not be able to do this because I think about I don't I don't know what I would go back to doing if I wasn't able to do this because you love it though I so love much. it so much some people like, I think they realize like they don't love it I that's true and this is a very easy business to get burned out on I get it it's yeah. really there's some people that like do this for five years and like I can't take it anymore I totally get it it's super stressful but even in my most stressful moments, I'm like, there's nothing I'd rather be doing. Because you love it. I lo- so what would you tell, since you're <laughs> on that beautiful high note where you could tell your passion you. is there, what would you tell someone who is aspiring to enter this business? Work for a planner or work for whoever, whatever area of this business you want to be in. Like, try to find a job. Do what you can. Don't be afraid to do what we were talking about earlier. Don't be afraid to do the dirty work. Don't be afraid to do the grunt work. I have been in positions where I've I've swept floors. I have cleaned charger plates one by one by hand. I have cleaned dishes. I have grooming. S- grooming. Yeah, I have sorted it. through piles of linens. I have loaded chairs onto trucks myself. I have loaded chairs off to trucks myself. I, you know, there's you work late hours. Work late even hours. When you work. You're supposed to be home. Yes. Work from eight o'clock in the morning to one o'clock in the morning. This is not easy. None of this is easy. I know, and this is something I have to tell myself all the time. Sometimes it looks like these people have come from nowhere and are doing these crazy weddings. I'm sure there's something that, but that's what they what we see on social media. I'm sure there's something happening behind the scenes that we're not aware of. It has to be like there's no way it's so not. So stay like true to you. Yes. And don't let the the influence social media just kind of like yeah. deter you from your like, path. Don't be afraid to do the hard work. Don't yeah. be afraid to do the hard work. I hear sometimes of some younger people that are like you know why can't I do this or I don't want to do this like this isn't worth my time like whatever but if it's not worth your time then you don't want it that badly because it is worth your time I promise you I have done listen when I first started planning weddings when I I did my first like real day of coordination for five hundred dollars five hundred dollars you but it's your most proud five hundred dollars ever made yeah because that was the first person that like trusted me enough with like their wedding guys that this isn't like a regular party this is somebody's wedding this is somebody's like people pour their life savings into this for some people it's not for some people people some people have the money and they don't care or whatever but for some people this is everything they've dreamed of since they were a little girl with a pillowcase over their head pretending it's a veil you know (laughs) It's true. No, it's you so didn't play true. wedding when you were a little girl? Like, come yeah, on. I'm trying to remember the pillow. I just pictured it. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I did, actually. But, the, but you know. I know exactly what you mean. I had a first grade wedding, okay? Listen, you were in a bunch of weddings. That's why. <laughs> but, I was, but listen, I had like a little elementary school boyfriend, and I had a wedding on the playground in first grade. I wasn't grade. a lot of boyfriends that young. Oh, I wasn't either. I didn't care. Um. <laughs> but my, my point is, is that, like, this is – I. And I've checked myself, too, because I've gotten to a point where, like, this is not necessarily lather, rinse, repeat, but there is a procedure to this, and there is a process, and this is my nine to five, but this is somebody's once-in-a-lifetime day. That's beautiful. You always have to remember that this is somebody's once-in-a-lifetime day. People tell me all the time, like, I've never done this before. I'm like, good, you shouldn't have ever done this before. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't want you to do this again. (laughs) I mean, mean, I'll take you on again if you get divorced and want to get married 10 years later, sure, but, like... I, I don't want to make the most special. I want to make the most you. special day for you. Like I want you to like when you watch when you watch your anniversary highlight video or when you watch your when you when your thing comes up in your reels or your re- reminder comes up on Instagram. Like I want you to remember it's like oh my god we had such a great day and like Steph was a part of that and she made it so seamless and so flawless and her and her team were you know were made our day so 
beautiful and perfect and magical for us. Like that's all I want. That's really all I want. I want that and I would love as a bonus, like a good review <laughs> or a recommendation. That stuff to me is more valuable than any amount of money you can give me or that you would want, you know, that you would pay. Cause it's just like, it, it's, it's, it's a testament that like everything that I put my blood, sweat and tears into, and it's literally blood, sweat and tears. I've broken a foot in doing an event setup before. So I probably believe you, it. Sometimes it's blood. I believe and it. And I kept working. I didn't go to the ER till the next day. <laughs> The bottom of a cocktail table fell. I was moving it at the Rusty Pelican and the like you know, like the star at the bottom. Yeah. It just it wasn't like secured correctly and like kinda like fell off onto this is why this is my one and done like don't wear open toe shoes at a venue, but it oh, fell like straight painful. onto my foot and like I had fractures in the top of my foot. But anyway. Um <laughs> Literally, blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this business, and every day is a challenge. At every wedding, something happens. Even like the most perfectly executed and flawless, like there's still something. Nothing is ever perfect. Just like I always tell my clients, I would be lying to you if I told you I was you were gonna have a zero stress day. That's a lie. Anybody that tells you that is lying to you. But I will do everything in my power, and my team will do everything in our power to make sure it's a it's least stressful as possible and the most memorable time. And the most memorable time and the most fun that we can have with your bad buddy impersonator. <laughs> Mr. 786. <laughs> Mr. 786 will be at your wedding if you want them. So we can make it happen. As a designer and also as a future bride-to-be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one stop shop. So Stephanie, now we're gonna do the yeah. fire round okay. questions, which is something that we do with all our guests where you just pick out, I would say two questions okay. and you answer, you have no idea what's in here. So you just I'm have nervous. to answer <laughs> as truthfully as possible. So. All right, I need a drink first. <laughs> okay. Okay. What's the most unexpected or bizarre event theme or request you've ever received from a client? Bizarre event theme theme okay this isn't bizarre but i had my first like theme theme wedding recently i did a game of thrones wedding recently oh, that's so cool. for another planner which to me was like a super honor because like when another person in the industry trusts you enough to take on their wedding it's like a, a big, huge yeah it's, it's a, a huge, huge compliment yeah. it's a huge compliment so we did a game of thrones wedding um i my husband, I like to like lovingly call him the king of the nerds. So I'm very much used to, yeah, I didn't, I listen to like tip for all you ladies out there that are like single girls that are like getting screwed by all these like finance bros and these Miami guys or whatever, like go for the nerd. I promise you, you're not going to regret that. Um, <laughs> So I have like a little bit of like a background just from like being around this kind of stuff or like yeah. I know certain things or whatever. But there was a big challenge that day because there was like a little bit of miscommunication within the vendors and like who was going to handle setup or not. Um, and again, as a planner, it falls on me. So um, the other thing is the the table numbers were like the house symbols of the Game of Thrones houses. Uh -huh. But a lot of it was like, I saw the show. So I know like a good amount about the show. I liked the show. But there was a lot of like the symbols. There were like obvious ones from the show, but then there's stuff from the books. And I'm like, I no. That's a whole nother. That's yeah. a whole other level that like I'm not, you know, I'm not there. So I had to like enlist the help of like friends of mine that are nerdy or friends of my husband that are nerds. I'm literally FaceTiming people. Like, which one is this? What is this? And like some of the groomsmen were also like really nerdy and were able to help me. And I was kind of friends with a lot of these people. Yeah. So I was able to kind of like pull people to help. But I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Like, please help me. And then like to kind of coordinate it with the seating chart and like, oh, this is this and this is this because oh the seating God, chart yeah. had like the house name but not the symbol, but then the table number had the symbol but not the name. So 
So like you had to know. So you had to know. And I'm like, I, I'm like a tad nerdy, but I'm not like at this yeah. level. Like, so that, that was a little bit of a, a little That's bit cool of, though. it was cool because it was, I would have done the same thing though. Like I might know like Let the show, but these pictures by the way are sick because the decor that we had, like the florist did like florals with like fruits also. And like, so made it really on point. Really on point. Concept. Like there were like we had some of these table runners. So some like one of the things from the show is like there's like a like territory or whatever like that takes place. It's like an eternal winter. So some of these had like fur runners and like we had like the decor was really eclectic and like really cool and really put together. Like so definitely you could tell curated by somebody in the industry. D the design elements were all there, but it was just like there were certain things I was like I don't know what this. is. <laughs> Like, it's like, what is this symbol? Like, what is this? Like, what is this octopus? Like, I don't get it. Like, what are these, like, stars? Like, I don't know. I know, like, the three obvious ones, and that's yeah. it. Like, I know the dragons. Like, that one I know. <laughs> that's so funny. That's kind of cool, though, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. That's so cool. then I kind of start thinking, and I'm like, maybe nerd weddings are, like, a thing. Maybe we, like, can start, like, a little... Like a whole Like series. a little division of, yeah. like, nerd weddings. Like, what do we call this? We could do, we could do like, Harry Potter weddings. We could oh, my God. Do, I would love, like, like a, a Harry Star Potter Star Wars dinner. wedding. Like, how cool would Oh my God. So now I'm like, where can I go with this? Because <laughs> my brain's my brain's always going. Like I, I have um, I have a like very overactive imagination, and I kind of am always like thinking. You see, I always say siempre estoy inventando. I'm always <laughs> inventando. You have to be doing. I see my whole. Yeah. You have to. My husband's yeah. like, no inventa. I'm like, I'm always inventando. <laughs> My inventas are what pay for our creative vacations. So like, let me keep creating. You like your Gucci loafers? They have me invento before. That's so funny. You're like, let me be and let me do that. No, but I think it's awesome because that, that's your creative side, just kind of yeah. how it operates. Like we, we like taking a little idea and making it into something like grand. That's my theater kid. Yeah. That's my theater kid, but that's what it is. So that's awesome. Can I pick another one? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. Do you have a favorite personal event in your life that holds a special place in your heart and what made it unforgettable? Um, yes. <laughs> so last, no, what year was it? It was whatever year I was pregnant. So um, I did my wedding before I was in this business. So part of what like kind of, got me thinking that maybe I wanted to. to do this is that like I got like the post wedding blues where I was like well what do I do now after my wedding um and I really didn't have any other life events like after that that were like he my first baby shower my first baby my mom kind of paid for it and took it over so I didn't really have like a whole ton of stay in that or whatever plus I was like super broke at the time yeah. so I couldn't really do what I would have wanted to do Sorry. um so when I came around to my second baby, I was already like eight years deep in this business and I had a ton of contacts. Um, so I had said for a while, I've been telling my husband, like whatever our next big event is, like I'm going balls to the wall and whether it's another baby or whatever. I, I TB, a uh, little TMI. Um, I had a, I struggled a lot getting pregnant with my second yeah. baby. So I kind of got to a point where like, I didn't think it was going to happen again. So my son's first communion was coming up mm -hmm. and I had told him, I'm like, I'm taking this amount of money and this is what we're doing and just you know swipe your card because this is what's happening yeah um my son's first communion was going to be balls to the wall yeah and it is what it is because this is i'm not having another baby i'm not getting married again like this is kind of where we're at like until i decide to have an anniversary party which is still far off like yeah. this is what we're doing well i got pregnant that same year and it turned out that my son's first communion and my due date were very close together. So I had to have a baby shower and a first communion kind of within the same month. Oh, my Not God. Not kind of. Almost like 33 days apart or something like that. Oh, my God. So that big ass budget that I had for that one event now gets divided in two. Yeah. Because you have... Community and a new baby on the And a new baby. And, like, I'm not going to shaft this new baby because, like, I was going to, you know, I wasn't going to, like, do, like, a, like, whatever baby shower. That's the other thing we were kind of talking about off camera also. It's, like, when you're in this business, there's certain expectations that your Everyone expects, friends and family yes. have. Because it's I like, can't wait to your event. It's going to be amazing. It's going to have this. And they expect, like, dragons. And well, I think, well, like, low-key... I'm dying to do this, and if anybody's willing to do this, like, please let me know. I wanted to have, 
I'm a big um, supporter of like the LGBT community, and I have tons of friends, and I'm I, I consider myself an ally, and I you know whatever. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to have a drag show during my bridal shower and then I wanted the queens to stay and like while you open your gifts and just have them like roast everything and just have them do like colorful call and commentary I am dying to do That's so funny I, am, I have this that. idea to do a drag ora loca for like a gay wedding or something and I I tried to convince my last couple to do it we didn't really fly but like I'm dying to do like a drag show ora loca like ballroom like whole thing where it's just like it's fun. Yes. Fun, a show, yeah. all the stuff. So if anybody this, is down for this, straight, gay, glitter. whatever, get, call me. Because, like, let's do this. Um, anyway, so that's kind of what I wanted for that. And I, so. So this is what you wanted for your. This is what I wanted for my baby shower. Oh, okay. Not for the First Communion, obviously. The baby shower, we ended up hosting it at my, hus at my husband's grandmother's home, who has this beautiful home. Um in Kendall, but in a very nice area where it's a pretty affluent area and they have this beautiful home that they've had for a long time so i wasn't about to have like queens at this woman's house yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, would have killed her um so i essentially had to take this budget that i had had for this one event and divide it in two and have two events within 30 days on top of the fact that because everybody at school knows that i am a, an event planner and a wedding planner i had to do all these other communions as well so oh, wow. I had the baby shower a couple of weeks before. Beautiful baby shower. My friends in the industry really like hooked it up, pulled it off. They knew I was having two events in 30 something days. We had great food, we had beautiful decor and we pulled it off. And then a couple of weeks later, we did it all over again for the communion. I was literally nine months pregnant. I was like, my due date was a couple of weeks away. Oh my God, and um, you were so I did out six there. communions that day. Um, it was crazy. Pregnant and all. Cra pregnant and all. And ended up <laughs> ended up in the hospital that night with false labor. I didn't have the baby until like a week later. But I had been it's all standing and working. I had been saying the whole time, I just need to make it to three o'clock on community day. Once three o'clock happens, I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens after three o'clock. Like literally at three o'clock on the dot, these contractions started up. happening. That's so. And funny. I'm like, oof. So I was, I was in the hospital at night, fall asleep. Baby wasn't born until like a week and a half, like a couple, like week and some days later. But so that's your most memorable event for sure. That is like pretty up there, I gotta say. All those baptisms and oh my god. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. Can you discuss a common misconception you'd like to clear up? Oh, why, yes, I can. <laughs> What's um, the misconception you would like to clear up? Um, that weddings don't have to be six figures to be beautiful. And I think that that's kind of what, where my niche is and where I fall in line. I do a lot of weddings under six figures that are beautiful. Go to my Instagram page and look, you guys. I know they look like six figure weddings. Some of them have gotten pretty close, but I think that you can have a beautiful wedding for reasonably priced, in, it, it's including everything that's happening now with inflation and while everything has gotten so expensive, yes, none of that is false. However, you can still do a beautiful wedding for less than $100,000. It is possible, the vendors are there, you just have to do a little bit of research. If you go with this, the people that you see on TikTok and you look at the people that you see on Instagram, yeah, they're gonna give you some outrageous pricing or what some people consider outrageous pricing. But I promise you, we are here, we exist. I'm not trying to be a gazillionaire. Yeah, I like nice things, but I'm trying, at the end of the day, like anybody else, trying to pay my bills, trying to pay my staff, like most of us are. And you're I, passionate about the industry and you know that there's just like quinceañeras yeah. and all these events. Yeah. There's people that save up for it. And yeah. no matter the price, 100%. they can still have a beautiful 100%. event. I also um, know. With realistic expectations, with of realistic course. Realistic expectations. Yeah. I mean, I would just say do your research. Be realistic. Um, yeah. That is that is the biggest. But that is the biggest misconception. I, the, the amount of people I have that come to me and tell me, like, listen, I spoke to somebody else and they told me that I wasn't going to have a wedding for X amount of money. I'm like, that's not, that's just not true. I see it all the time. Every week. Every week. Yeah. Every week. This current week, this current week, I think this couple that I have this week probably spends like maybe 60, 65. Yeah. Which I get is a lot of money. I'm like, I'm not saying, I, I, that's someone's entire salary sometimes. Like, I get yeah. it. I get it. 
It's I'm pretty, not saying it's, it, that's pretty high self. I'm not saying it's an insignificant amount of money. I'm but not also, saying that. I, I think the main thing, Stephanie, right, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're not gonna get like a dream wedding for ten thousand dollars. Like not with like all the bells and whistles, like all these things with the flowers, because there's like you said, already food and beverage absorb. Fifty mm-hmm. percent of the cost. Can you have a ten thousand dollars like, wedding? Isn't sure. even just having a Super Bowl party? Don't you spend just like a thousand? Like, I can't have a birthday party for my kids without yeah, spending fifteen hundred bucks. Everything you're yeah. looking at, like it's already there to the three thousand dollars. You're like, where did it go? Listen, my small socials <clears throat> are heading towards are like ten thousand. Yeah, between seven and ten thousand dollars. What would you say? And um, to kind of like with that question. What would you say is just a good minimum a couple would need today? Like to anyone who's listening, watching, let's say those couples that are really like they're doing on their own, no parents help, what would be a good, like not, and mind you, they're realistic, what would be their number? I would say like 60 to 70. Okay. 60 to 70. 60 on the low end, depending on what you do for food or depending on what venue um, what venue would I would allows say, you to do. I would say the best way to kind of not cheat the system, but the best way to kind of get the best bang for your buck is to find a venue that does include catering and rentals. Because mm-hmm. um, that way, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Mm-hmm. I also, if you're working with somebody like me, for example, like I will do a month of coordination for those kinds of venues. I don't do month of coordination for every kind of venue. I won't do a month of coordination for a venue like Walton House, for example, which is I am a preferred vendor on. Walton House is just a venue. They don't include chairs or tables or anything like that. You have, to, have bring to bring everything. You have to bring everything. That is more work for your planner. That is a partial planning. Yeah. Period. End of story. It is partial planning. You can do it month of. You can. And I'm sure there are month of coordination uh, planners that do it. I know that venue like the back of my hand. I am super tight with the owner. It's one of those situations that when I'm there, I have the ca- the code to that gate of that property. I can get yeah. in there anytime I want. He knows that when I'm there, he doesn't have to worry. Yeah. But there are there are costs that come with that security. Yeah. You know? Um, you can do it. It is possible to have a financially feasible wedding and not kill yourself or go into debt or whatever. Don't go into debt. Oh my god, another don't. Don't go into debt. I've had couples take out loans. I'm not a financial advisor by any means. I don't pretend to be, but like don't go into debt to do it. Don't take out a loan or don't take out like a People have asked me about like putting things on credit cards and stuff. Like I am literally the worst person to ask for that. You're like, go to your financial advice. No, for sure. I'm just like, I, I don't want to be responsible for like. I think each person is just important that they know what they're willing. Each partner right. or whatever it is that they're. And I've had people willing. that tell me, hey Steph, I'm not willing to spend more than sixty grand on a wedding. Okay. Fine. Well, you work we'll with it. it. Yeah. We'll find it. We'll work with it. There are venues that exist. They're out there. I promise you, they're there. Yeah. They're there. Just get out of the beach. <laughs> get out of the beach. Get out of Brickle. Yeah, especially South Florida. Miami, it's like one of those places that definitely the pricing, especially with even just everything. But what would you kind of like to kind of, you know, close everything? Mm -hmm. What would you say are or is, or maybe you have more than one, knowing you probably have more than one, (laughs) uh, quotes that you live by? And what, but before you answer that, what would you say is the future for events by you? Like, what do you see your upcoming goal being definitely to work out of state i would love to i was kind of mentioning to you um i'm trying to work on a venue in new york yeah um that has followed me on social media for a long time um i would love so you to, want to start dipping into different i would states. love to dip into different states i would love to do something like georgia like atlanta has a really cool market i want Beautiful to go to too. some yeah i want to kind of go into different kind of venues and see like i would love to do like we have museums here, obviously, but I want to do like some of those like older museums you see maybe up north. I would love to do some of these like winery estate venues like up in the Carolinas or even in California, Sonoma or Napa or something like that. Yeah, they're pretty epic. Yeah, I would love to do something like Pelican Hill in Orange County, California, which is like an epic venue, Cliffside Beach. I would love to do. I was in Asheville recently for um for over the holidays, and there are some like I would love to do. Um, oh my God, what is the name of that? that hotel grove park oh, okay um in Asheville, something like that mountainside something in like colorado um a castle in europe like i love spain i would love to do something you definitely europe. on this i think the main thing for this year we're going to see from you stephanie's travel oh my god travel is there yeah um i also would love to like low-key i want to open a venue 
yeah. I think I have an idea for a venue that kind of doesn't exist here. Um, I would love to eventually maybe have a rental company because I know that business. I would love to have, I don't know if I want to get into catering. Catering, I don't want to do with the health department. <laughs> so like, even if I have a venue, like it's going to have a kitchen, but it'll be an open kitchen. Like bring your caterer. I'm, yeah. You know, um, I'm open to caterers. Uh, I have caterers that I love and work with. I can recommend you caterers all the live long day. <laughs> um, and I would love to like have something that I could like, my son expressed to me the other day, again, he's nine, so like take it with a grain of salt. But my son expressed to me the other day that like, he's like, mom, I think I want to take over your business when I'm older. Like, I would love to do that. Yeah. You know, I'd love to have something that I can pass on to somebody else. Like, I don't want this company to die with me. Like, I want it to go. Like, I'm Continue, doing this. Yeah. Like, I'm doing this. Like, anybody else that I think is an entrepreneur, like, we want to build generational wealth. Wealth. Mm -hmm. My grandparents came, both sets of my grandparents came to this country with fucking nothing. Yeah. You know, with like the clothes on their backs. My grandmother had to smuggle the diamond earrings that I wore to my wedding out of Cuba. You know, I want to build something for my kids. That's so beautiful. My and I think it's powerful. My grandfather didn't, he had a business in Cuba that was taken from, the, from him by the government and never started his own business in this country because he said... So the day he died, that he was never going to allow a government to to take his business from him ever again. So he always worked for somebody else. Yeah. And I don't want to. I want to do that. I want to create my own thing to like leave for you my. You want to build your own legacy. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's also beautiful because, and uh, you know, we had talked a little bit like, especially with parents, we see them grow up and see how hard they work. It mm -hmm. inspires you. Yeah. And that's what you want to you want to inspire your children yeah, as well. For sure, yeah. for sure. My dad recently retired a couple of years ago. My mom still works. Like you know, my mom tells me all the time, like I want to come work for you, and I'm like, take care of my kids instead. That's how you help me. That's what I tell her. I'm like, listen, there's nothing that you do more for me that like help me with my kids when I'm working because I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't have like the sports yeah. that I have. And that's the first thing I always say. It's like, I have an amazing, amazing village. I really do. My in-laws, my parents, my girlfriends that are like my sisters that take care of my kids sometimes when my parents and my in-laws can't my husband my husband who's a teacher my yeah. husband who like tutors to so that i like part of the reason that i can do this full time is my husband has a badass tutoring side hustle where like i don't necessarily have to have you guys are a team yeah my husband takes care of takes care of my kids when i'm out in a wedding till one o'clock in the morning like and he's not babysitting he's parenting like he is like he's fully in this with me you know, I, I could not do this without them. I really couldn't. So as much as it's hard and it sometimes sucks trying to have it all, like, I feel like I'm not perfect, but I do a pretty good job of doing it. Yeah. So, and that's, I, I'm doing it for them. That's beautiful. Now, end it with your quote. Oh my god! Because that was such a beautiful <laughs> moment. I'm gonna start tearing up, Stephanie. So, oh my god, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a. You know, have you ever seen that that meme from Thirty Rock? <laughs> that it's like, she's like throwing up into like a, a toilet, and the guy's there with a broom, going there, there, like trying to comfort yeah, her with a broom. Comforted. That's me. I'm oh, not yeah, a mushy. Like I'm emotion. not a mushy, emotional person. My best friend is, and she, my husband and my husband are both like the mushiest people on the face of the and planet. And you're just like there, and there. I'm like. <laughs> yes, yeah, like not yesterday. Was it Saturday, Friday? I was sitting next to my best friend at a brewery, and I was like in a little bit of a mood. And she's like, "Do you need a hug?" I'm like, "No, absolutely not." And she hugged me anyway, and I'm like, <laughs> "That's so bubble." Funny. Okay, so <laughs> these are the closest people in my life. Like, I'm only mushy with my kids, is what I say. <laughs> but you're like, no. They're there. I don't even remember what my quote Oh, the was. quote. Your ending quote. I don't remember what it was. I, I don't remember what it was. No, do you remember? No. <laughs> I know. I said we should write it down and we did it. <laughs> well, look, I will say this. Nobody is going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. And you have to be your own number one fan. And, like, I know a lot of people that know me know that I am my, I'm my biggest critic, but I am my biggest fan. Yeah. And if you don't believe in yourself and you don't think you can do this, you're going to have moments of self-doubt and you're going to have moments where you're going to be like, man, why isn't it me? Or why isn't it this? But at the end of the day, you have to put your big girl panties on and keep going. If you want this to work, you have to work your ass off. You have to do it. You have to do it. There's no other way. There's no yeah. other way there. You can't coast. You can't coast. You got to do it.
Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. So make sure to follow Stephanie at Events by You on your Instagram. I'll make sure to have all her social handles yeah. down below. And thank you so much for being a guest today on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so like, glad that we met at the event. We I mean, met at uh, yeah, and we met at the event. We met at an so, event at an industry event. Yeah, and it was a like I honestly I'm like oh my god, you were like so sweet. Like so I'm like I have to have her on the episode. So make sure to tune into this episode, share, like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.